गणना गणपति गुंहवामहे कवि कवीनामुपमश्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मना ब्रह्मणस्पत आन शृण्वन्नूति विक्सीत साधनम प्रणो देवी सरस्वती वाजेबिर्वाजिनीवती दीनाम विगपत गणेशय नम सरस्वत नम श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हर ओ सदाशिव सरंभा श्रीकंठाराध्य मध्यमस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा सदाशिव शिवां स्कंदम केशव पद्मसंभव नंदीश्वर कुंभयो नि भरद्वाजात्रिगौतम नमोस्त गुरवे निंकंठशिवोगिने श्रुतिसार शिव विशिष्टाद्वैत परभाष्य विदाने तदीचि मुपमुंच मकंडेय पराशर श्वेताचार्य तिष्य नीलकंठशिवाह्वय जगद्गु श्रीकंठाराध्या रेणुकाराध्या मंगल देहि प्रभो त्रैलोक्य संपदालेक्य समुलेखन वित्त सच्चिदानंद शिवाय ब्रह्मणे नम यामुक्सर्वोका प्रकृति शास्त्रपारगाता धर्मचारिणी शंभो प्रणमा परा शिवा अमृता प्रपन्नासु विद्या प्रदायिनी अहर्निशम वंदे तां मनोरमा सांब शिवाय नम थैंक यू आल फॉर् जॉयनिंग so we covered the episode of opamanyu <clears throat> which is a very very important part in mahabharata that went for like 2 months so this is another interesting episode that comes in the drona parvam very very important uh, part in the very very important section in the mahabharata which has been quoted by acharyas also batta baskara who is even purvam to shankara who appeared in the 5th century has mentioned about a specific verse in this episode so this episode that comes in the end of drona parvam is a very very authentic episode in the mahabharata and very important too so i will explain the situation because uh, is a very very um, like uh, this leads to understanding how lord shiva is the supreme reality vyasa connects vyasa maharshi connects this beautifully to lord shiva and explains how shiva alone is the supreme reality so i will explain the situation so we know that the mahabharata war happened so bhishma bhishma parva is the sixth parva of mahabharata that's where bhagavad gita comes bhagavad gita is also described as the words of lord shiva and the form of lord shiva bhishma was the senapati was the commander in chief of the kaurava army for the first 10 days of the mahabharata war and then next 5 days it was drona and drona was the guru of the pandavas and kauravas and he was killed through deceit he was killed by drishta dyumna so when he was meditating in the battlefield uh, sitting and meditating in the battlefield drishta dyumna took that you know he saw this is the chance to kill drona and then he takes a sword and he cuts the head of drona so ashwatthama who is the son of drona is not able to take that he is unable to uh, withstand that and then he invokes the narayan astra to destroy the pandava army so that's where uh, what happens is he invokes the narayan astra and he you know casts the narayan astra against narayan astra is one of the speaking of that it is one of the powerful weapons it is one of the it is one of the powerful weapons it's not, it's not the most powerful weapon we see mahapashupata astra is the most powerful weapon which was obtained by arjuna by uh, doing penance to lord shiva it is the most powerful weapon narayana astra is one of the most powerful weapons so we see the prowess of pashupata astra mahapashupata astra told by upamanyu himself in the anushasana parvam 14th chapter mm, he says to krishna oh krishna that pashupata weapon that mahapashupata astra that i saw in the hands of lord shiva it can eliminate this entire it can destroy this entire universe it can even destroy it can quell any weapon it can also you know it can combat with any weapon like brahma astra or narayan astra or indra astra nothing no other weapon can stand before the mahapashupata astra it can also swallow off brahma and vishnu told by upamanyu himself in the 13th canto anushasana anushasana parvam 14th chapter so here ashwatthama leaves the narayana astra which is one of the powerful weapons definitely next to mahapashupata astra and then um, he thought the pandava army will be you know destroyed along with the pandavas and krishna also um, but to his surprise 
you know, nothing happens to them because they go and surrender to the Narayana Astra. The Pandavas, what they do is, they know the technique to get rid of the Narayana Astra through the grace of uh, Krishna. And then they go and surrender to the Narayana Astra. They fall at the, you know, uh, they prostrate all the Pandavas and Krishna and all the entire Pandava army. And then uh, it backs off, the Narayana Astra backs off. So, and then Ashwatthama is completely, he's not, he's, uh, uh, he's completely in distress. He doesn't know what to do. You know, he keeps on murmuring. Mm. So, he tried to kill the Pandavas and who tried to kill his father through deceit. So, he tried to kill them with the Astra and then uh, he was completely murmuring. He doesn't, he did not know what to do. And then uh, everything is a lie. Uh, nothing is true. Everything is a lie uh, at the end of the day. So, since he did, eh, eh, nothing happened as expected. So, he was saying everything is a lie. And then he came across Vyasa Maharshi. And then that's where he questions, oh Vyasa Maharshi, mm, you know, I tried to invoke the Astra and why did my Astra fail? You know, to kill, to kill the Pandavas and to kill, you know, the entire Pandava army. No one can withstand that Astra. Oh Vyasa Maharshi, the Asuras or Gandharvas or Pishachas or Rakshasas or Yakshas or oh, Uragas or the birds or human beings can never withstand that Narayan Astra. Now, how come my Astra, how come I failed today? Oh Vyasa Maharshi. Mm -hmm. Ashwatthama asks to Vyasa Maharshi. That's where Vyasa Maharshi comes into play and then he says, Vyasa Uvacha Mahantam Eva Martam Maam Yam Tvam Prichasi Vismayat Tam Pravakshyami Te Sarvam Samadaya Manakshruno And then Vyasa Maharshi asks, so we saw the questioning, we saw the question of Yudhishtra initially. He asks, oh Bhishmacharya, Please talk about the glories of Lord Shiva. That was the question. And then Bhishma says, I am incapable of describing Lord Shiva. And then he directs them to Krishna. Krishna himself talks about the glories of Lord Shiva. And then uh, he, he talks about his uh, he talks about uh, his meeting with Upamanyu Maharshi and how he got initiated into, you know, uh, how Upamanyu Maharshi gave Shiva Diksha and those kind of things. So it starts off with a question, mm, right? So, Atato Brahma Jignasa, let there be questions about the Absolute Truth. The Brahma Sutras also say that. So, here also the question is posted by Ashwatthama and then Vyasa Maharshi replies, Oh, Ashwatthama, oh dear son, you have asked a very, very wonderful, you know, you have asked a wonderful question. Uh, I would like to recount a very interesting story uh, in order to answer this. Mm? Because we saw how the story, the Yudhishthira's question was connected to various things. How Upamanyu had, uh, how Krishna met Upamanyu, how Upamanyu had the darshan of Lord Shiva, how Upamanyu got Shiva Jnanam from his mother, how Krishna got Shiva Jnanam from Upamanyu and it went on how Tandi Maharshi glorified Lord Shiva, how Tandi got, Tandi Maharshi got Shiva Sakasranama. So it goes into story, into a story, into a story. So we have to, we should be able to connect. So here also Vyasa Maharshi, in order to answer this question of Ashwatthama, why, you know, he was not able to defeat the Pandavas and Pandava army, he connects this with a story. So please listen attentively, oh dear Ashwatthama. He says, Yo sau narayano nama purvesham api purvajaha ajayata chakaryartam putro dharmasya vishvakrita Satapastivramataste Shishiram Girimastitaha Urdvabahur Mahateja Jualana Ditya Sannibaha. He who is called as Narayana, hmm? who is the oldest of the oldest, huh? he underwent severe penances in the Mount of Himavat. Himavat Giri Kanyakaha. Mahadeva is eternally with the Himavad Giri Kanyagaha, the daughter of the mountains. Mountains are very dear to Mahadeva. Mujavat is also mentioned in the Vedas. Paro Mujavat Oti. Mujavat is also a mountain. Himavat Gokarna, these kind of things. Now here one point I want to, uh, I want to expand. No, Nar here it says, Purvesham Abhi Purvajaha, Vyasa says, Narayana. He is the oldest of the oldest, older than the oldest. Mm. But we have to understand this very carefully. These kind of vacuums are present for Brahma also and Narayana also in the Shastras. But on the we have to understand everything as a whole. Pur Vajaya Chapa Rajaya Chanamo Madhyamaya Chapa Kalpaya Chanamo 
Mahadeva alone was present before the creation, during the middle of the creation and after the creation. Mm -hmm. So when it talks about, you know, when these kind of things are referred to Brahma and Narayana, it is only secondary. Mahadeva alone is that oldest. Mm -hmm. So to say that in Padma Purana, Patalakanda, 108th chapter, 70th verse, there it says, Chatur Nishvasa Matrena Vishnor Ayur Udahritam. Now, Brahma's age is like 311 trillion human years. You can just imagine the age of Brahma is 311 trillion human years. But that Brahma himself comes from the you know, navel of Vishnu. And uh, his age, Brahma's age is like four inhalings of Vishnu. And then that Vishnu's age itself is the four inhalings of Maheshwara. Chatur Nishvasa Matrena Vishnor Ayur Udahartam. The age of Vishnu, the entire lifespan of Vishnu is the four inhalings of Maheshwara told in Padma Purana Patalakanda, 108th chapter 71st verse. Para at parataro brahma tat para at parato harihi tat para at parato ishastan me manashiva sankalpa mastu. The word paratparam, the great means greatest of the greatest, that is referred for Brahma also in the Vedas. It reminds me of Hiranyagarbha Suktam. Hiranyagarbha Suktam says, Hiranyagarbha Samavartata Gre Bhutasya Jataha Patireka Asit. Hiranyagarbha. Patir Eka Asit. Hiranyagarbha was one without a second in the beginning. And then everything, all the jivas appeared from him. So does this mean that Brahma is the greatest? No. Right? So, even, but the Vedas doesn't stop there. Tatpara at Parato Hari. Even greater than Brahma is Hari. Tatpara at Parato Ishas Tanme Manashiva Sankalpa Mastu. Mahadeva is one without a second. Even greater than Brahma and Narayana is that Mahadeva Maheshwara, who is the oldest of the oldest of the oldest. There is nothing that is Purvam to Mahadeva. Mahadeva alone is described as ageless. Mm -hmm. So, when these kind of things come for Brahma and Narayana, we have to consider it in a secondary, you know. We should not take that literally. Mahadeva alone is described as the ageless personality according to the Vedas. So that personality named Narayana underwent severe austerities and severe penances. Mm -hmm. Urdhvabahur, how he was, what he, how he was doing penance? Urdhvabahur Mahateja Jwalanaditya Sannibaha Shastim Varsha Sagasrani Tavantyeva Shatamicha Urdhvabahu, he was having his hands upraised hmm? and standing on one leg. Jvalanaditya Sannipaha, splendor was coming out of his body. You now when people, rishis meditate for years and years, the divine splendor comes out of their body. It is also told in the Shastras. Shastim Varsha Sagasrani, how many years he was meditating like that? 66,000 years, hmm? subsisting on air alone. Ashoshayat tadatmanam vayu baksham bujekshanaha. Just by consuming air alone, he meditated. He was standing on one leg. Hmm? Now who he was meditating, we are, going, we are going to see that. So, and then uh, he was standing on one leg and then with hands upraised, he was meditating for 66,000 years. And then, Ataparam tapastavtva dvistatonyat punarmahat vyava prithivyor vivaram tejasa Samapurayat. Mm -hmm. So first he meditated for 66,000 years, subsisting on air alone. And then once again he underwent those austerities, twice that period. So 66,000 multiplied by 2, 132,000 years. Another 132,000 years he meditated. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. So here it says, Ambujekshanaha. Mahad uh, Vishnu is described as Ambujekshanaha, which means lotus. He has lotus eyes. How he acquired that uh, quality of being lotus eyed? Yatra lebe harish chakram upasya bahubir dinaihi pushkarai shatapatraishya netre nacha jagat patim. Harivamsha Puranam, 3rd canto, 84th chapter, 11th verse. Vishnu obtained the chakra after serving the Lord of the universe. And this story is present everywhere in Mahabharatam, Harivamsha Puranam, Shiva Puranam, Linga Puranam, Skanda Puranam, Vamana Puranam also talks about it. Varaha Puranam talks about it. Uh, everywhere uh, the story is present. Mm? Even Kurma Purana mentions about this. So like he was serving, you know, with uh, Mahadeva with uh, various lotuses. And uh, Mahadeva, in order to test his devotion, he stole one of the lotuses. Uh, and then Vishnu, you know, you cannot get up in when you are doing Shiva Puja. 
so he plucks out one of his eyes and then netrena cha jagatpatim he was he worshiped mahadeva with lotuses and also with netram <laughs> hari vamsha puranam says and then he offered his netra and then mahadeva appeared and he gave a very powerful weapon sudarshana chakra and also he gave you know from now on oh narayana you will be named as padmaksha padmalochana your eyes will be equal to that of lotus and that's why here <clears throat> vyasa says ambudekshana that lotus side personality was meditating for 66000 years and then he meditated for even 101 lakh 32000 years again mm? 